in the name of the company's core and the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle. I'm very happy to welcome you to this conference. My name is Aline Robert. I'm a journalist and I'm the co-founder of a new media called Climatico. And it's about climate and biodiversity. So I'm very happy to be here today to be part of this event uh, because I think that um, we do have amazing panelists. And uh, I think there is a, it's a proof that there is a new momentum being built around this topic of biodiversity. Um, biodiversity is an amazing asset, but it's also definitely in danger. It's at risk. And that's why SCORE, which is a reinsurance company and whose business is to evaluate risk, uh, has launched a new partnership with the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle to try to understand better the links between um, economics and biodiversity, and more precisely, reinsurance and biodiversity. So a new report about this relationship will be launched today, and that will be the main topic of our discussion. You will be able to take part in this discussion and ask your question uh, to the scientists and finance specialists. So I think it's a great occasion for all of us to know more about this subject. I'm very honored to be introducing our first speaker with Mr. Bruno David. Mr. David, bonjour. Bonjour, hello. Hello. Uh, Mr. David, you are a naturalist and you are the president of the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle. And uh, one of your priority, I think, is uh, to have people understand more about biodiversity, especially young people. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Mr. CEO of SCORE, dear Denis Kessler, dear colleagues and friends, uh, good morning to all. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you today to uh, kick off our conference about biodiversity and reinsurance initiated by the SCORE Foundation for Science and the Museum. Uh, it's an honor for our institution to play a part in those conversations. And I believe that the pandemic is a pivotal moment to raise awareness on biodiversity loss and reflect upon reinsurance issues. But before going any further, let me introduce you to the museum's main ambitions for knowledge transmission. At the crossroad between earth, life, and human sciences, uh, the museum focuses on nature on its relationship with the human species. And uh, this has been done for almost 400 years. Today, thanks to its uh, interdisciplinary expert teams and exceptional heritage, the museum is one of the rare institutions poised to study the evolution of life from its very beginning, more close to 4 billion years and to the present day. Environmental awareness on protecting the planet lie at the earth of contemporary debates. Uh, the museum is fully committed to these issues and occupies a position of reference thanks to basic and applied research, conservation and the expansion of its collections, education, expertise, and of course, the dissemination of knowledge toward a large number of publics. The museum is a research center and draws on laboratory work, worldwide expeditions, a wide range of disciplines, outstanding collections, and a recognized expertise. But our role is also to share knowledge through education and dissemination activities. Climate change regularly makes the front page, but few people know about or understand the cost of species loss. There is not an understanding that climate change and biodiversity are interdependent in that climate change can contribute to biodiversity loss and biodiversity loss can make climate change and its effects worse. And people just don't know that how much biodiversity was involved from the very beginning in the climate on Earth. If we have oxygen in our atmosphere, it's just that because biodiversity produced oxygen billion years ago. At the museum, we are making these critical connections easier for people to see and act upon. Biodiversity loss affect economic systems and human societies. Humans rely on various plants, animals, and other organisms for food, of course, building materials, drugs, medicines, and their availability as commodities is important to many cultures. The loss of biodiversity 
threatens global balance between all different ecosystems and that's why it's urgent to act. And it's the role of your museum to carry the science voice in public debate. As a national center of research on nature, the museum carries out a mission of expertise for the French government and for many of our national, international, public and private organizations. The museum expertise is grounded in scientific knowledge. We provide a scientific basis for decision-making on nature conservation policy and the characterization of conservation status for species, natural habitats, and ecosystems. We also develop indicators and conduct impact studies for few developmental projects. Biodiversity loss is a shared concern. Governments, companies, non-governmental organization, and the scientific community must work together to preserve natural habitats and protect the species. It's important for all the actors, public and private, to work together towards that goal. The time of separate things is over. The museum encourages private companies to reflect upon their responsibility as key players for sustainable development. That's the reason why we welcome very much the SCORE Foundation's proposal to take part in these debates on biodiversity and reinsurance. Today, I am excited to discover the findings of this museum expert report as it represents the shared commitment of the academic world and the private sector working together to understand and preserve biodiversity. However, as a scientific, I have a supplementary message. Life is not just a complex system. We cannot reduce life in beings to complex devices. Life is driven by evolution. Evolution cannot be predicted. And we must accept that neither the exact reactions nor the future of life could be predicted. I, I know that it is relatively hard to inject in a process of reinsurance. And for you, it's a relatively incertitude. But we have also to learn to live with a high degree of uncertainty as far as life is concerned. It's intrinsic with life. Anyway, it's urgent to shine a new light and convey strong messages on biodiversity protection. It's our responsibility as human beings, and it will be the better protections of our societies. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a very great conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. David, for this inspiring introduction. Um, we also have the chance today to have Mr. Denis Kessler. Mr. Kessler, bonjour. Bonjour. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Kessler, you are the chairman and CEO of SCORE, and you are the one who initiated this partnership uh, with the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle. So we are very interested to know the reasons why you launched this very innovative program. Thank you. Hello, Bruno. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to welcome you to this scientific uh, conference. As a global rancher, uh, we aim at uh, to be at the cutting edge of uh, expertise, of course, of all types of risk. We are firmly uh, uh, committed to pushing back the frontiers of uh, risk-related knowledge and uh, sharing thoughts about ideas, analysis, about the current and potential emerging risk threatening both societies and economies. So this, this commitment is an integral part of SCORE's DNA as illustrated by SCORE's uh, tagline or motto, the art and science of risk. We constantly invest in uh, the understanding of risk and uh, we actively support risk-related uh, research, uh, uh, scientific research, notably through a corporate uh, foundation for science. It's called the SCORE Corporate Foundation for Science. It's chaired by uh, André Lévillan. It was created uh, 10 years ago in 2011. And over the years, it has supported um, multi-year research and developed several partnerships with universities and scientific institutions around the world, involving a broad range of disciplines, such as mathematics, actuarial science, geophysics, climatology, economics, and finance. We are very proud that the SCORE Corporate Foundation for Science has partnered with the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle to conduct a study on the risk related to biodiversity loss 
under the aegis of uh, Biodiversity and Reinsurance Chair, which we jointly created with the museum in 2019, uh, two years ago. Uh, founded in, back in 1793, the Musée National d'Histoire Naturelle is one of the most renowned um, uh, museum uh, science institution in, in, in the world. You know, it, I would like to take this opportunity to thank warmly uh, the teams of Museum d'Histoire Naturelle and the SCORE uh, Corporate Foundation for Science for this pioneering very large scale uh, study. The evidence of, for biodiversity loss and the accompanying loss of genetic diversity is compelling throughout the world. I mean, uh, the growing concern over the changing variety and variability of life forms on Earth is due both to the rapid pace at which uh, biodiversity loss is, in, is occurring and the fact that it is primarily caused, whether directly or indirectly, by the impact of human activity. There are large varieties of risk. We at school classify them by distinguishing acts of God, natural catastrophes, hurricanes, earthquakes, whatever, acts of man, man-made risk through economic activities or through technology, but also the acts of the devil, voluntary destructions, wars, terrorism, poaching. Poaching is one of the, what we call the uh, an acts of the, of the devil. We distinguish accidental risks, one event, a typhoon, for instance, and serial risk, a series of events. We distinguish unique risk, the failure of a bank, or from systemic risk, the collapse of the banking system or all the financial system. On an analytical point of view, the most difficult risks to assess, to model, to analyze, to predict are the serial risks, the chain, and the systemic risk. Uh, in the case of the risk associated with a decrease or a change of biodiversity, we are precisely in the domain of serial and systemic risk. <clears throat> the most complex part of the universe of risk. There are many stochastic interactions between all the type of uh, developments and events. Some of them, some of those interactions are neither uh, observable or even explainable. Some of them appearing in the short term, we can uh, see them, but some of them will emerge in the long term, maybe very long term. And here we can only anticipate model or scenarios. There are it has been said by Bruno, analogies between the risk of climate change and the risk of decreasing or changing biodiversity. My conviction, or maybe I would say my intuition, is that the latter biodiversity risks are much more complex than the former climate change. When you really look at it, it's certainly one of the domain which is the most complex to understand. And the report shows clearly that those two risks, climate change on one side, biodiversity risk on the other side, have obvious relations. They do interact. Therefore, I believe that in this domain, we enter a world that I call complexity square. You have two domains of risk, and they interact in such a way as to create unique risk due to the interaction, climate change, and biodiversity uh, changes. Indeed, the loss of biodiversity is an extremely complex and multifaceted issue with multiple interdependencies, as I just said, not least with climate change, which is increasingly contributing to the disruption of terrestrial and marine ecosystems. L like climate change, it constitutes a major long-term threat to our modern societies, and it may be described as a common good problem. It's a problem, all of us around the globe, all populations are concerned, no one uh, can say I'm not, I'm not concerned, and not only the existing uh, generations, but of course, all the future generations. We've been witnessing a progressive change in the collective social utility function over the last two decades. Whilst very little consideration was given to the environmental externalities of economic development and human activities, those have gained a lot of attention. This is, this is new, certainly, I would say, two to three decades. We've seen this for many years for climate change, and biodiversity reduction is now and also progressively coming to the top of the agendas of governments, uh, international institutions, 
policymakers, but also of the business world. And this is certainly something I would like to, to underline. Uh, identifying, understanding, assessing, tackling, addressing the associated risk is a global and shared commitment which requires the combined efforts of both public institutions and private actors in the form of strong and innovative public-private partnerships. And the one we just did with the uh, Museum uh, d'Histoire Naturelle is a good example of a very fecund uh, uh, partnership. With this, I will now give the floor to uh, Aline uh, uh, Robert, who will introduce the program of the conference and give you a quick flavor of the key issues which we're going to discuss in more details today. Again, thank you for the teams of the museum and the foundation for the remarkable work and I hope that this uh, report will be read and uh, by, by many actors. It's quite unique and to my point of view, uh, extremely innovative. 